My name is uh, Miguel Diez. I, I work at, at Digit in the European Commission, which is basically, for the ones who know, is European Commission is, is organizing different directorates. And I work in the one the, which is responsible for informatics, the Digit Digit. And um, yeah, what I plan to do in the next minutes is just to give you an overview of first the open source strategy, which was released in uh, October uh, last year. And then I will explain some of the things we are doing right now related to, to open source. So regarding the, the strategy, as, as I said before, it's public. You can check it out if you want. And there is the link afterwards in the final slide. Um, it was uh, released in October last year. and. Is not in fact the first strategy that we release. It was, it's in fact the fifth iteration of previous ones. Um, that uh, initially they were local, let's say, to our directorate in Digit. Uh, since we were in contact with open source in the year 2000, we have been producing different strategies uh, that were evolving with our expertise. Um, and uh, as until last year when we did this final one, which is different than the previous ones, because the previous one, as I said, it was for us. It was a document just for Digit Digit to um, to organize ourselves, to, to have our own strategy. But this one, it's a strategy that involves the whole commission. So with this strategy, the whole commission is adopting a position towards open source that was not formalized before, and uh, which is a big change. Um, and we like to apply this, this, this motto, think open, because that's what we are trying to, to achieve. It's to change the culture within commission, which in fact was already happening. Uh, we will get into details later, but uh, to have it in this formalized in a strategy involving the entire commission is, is a huge step for us, and we are very proud of it. Uh, the strategy comes with an action plan, it's, it's, it's 10 actions. I will not go through all of them uh, because that will take a lot of time, but I will, I will focus on the ones that I believe are more relevant and the ones we are working on right now. And the first one, and this is something we see happening more and more often in, in the public environment, is the creation of an open source program office. Probably in the private environment that was happening already a few years ago, but um, in the public environment that was not happening as often. We see now that uh, more and more different organizations, they are having this um, body uh, uh, within the organization. And in our case, yes, we that's the first action. We did it uh, together with the strategy in October. And for an OSPO, there are different definitions, um, but in our case, our mission, what we try to do at least in this first stage is first of all, to promote open source practices within commission, uh, provide support and guidance to the open source projects, and as well to those projects that want to become open source. We represent as well commission in open source events like, like this one. And um, we, we try to do networking also. We are in contact with other OSPOs. And uh, finally, of course, this action plan that I mentioned before, we are the responsibles to make sure it's, it's happening. So um, now thinking more about this action plan, uh, I will explain some of them. Um, I explained the, the creation of the OSPO already. The action number two is what we call inner source as default. So applying open source within, within commission. And we like this picture because it's basically about breaking silos. It's about sharing the code that we do, making it open, accessible to, to other teams so that they can benefit from the code that we produce. Um, you have to know that commission is very big. We, we are more than uh, 30,000 staff members and that's without considering the, the consultants. And in every DG, we produce a lot of applications. We produce a, a lot of code. We were checking in our Git repository a couple of uh, weeks ago and we had at least more than 1,500 projects, IT projects, maybe it's even more. And we learned that 
not all of them are open. Not not all of them, the code is accessible to the other teams. And in fact, um, when we checked, we only could see 10% of these uh, 1,500 projects, which means that we have a lot of code. We have a lot of software that is not being seen by other teams. And this is a pity. We cannot capitalize on the things we do. We might be doing things twice. We cannot contribute, and that's not good for the organization. So uh, what we are trying to do now in our uh, Git repository is to make sure that for every new project, when you start with an um, with yeah, developing code, by default, your code will be visible to the other teams. And we do not expect that by that, people are going to start doing pull requests all of a sudden. But at least it's the first step to make this switch that I was mentioning before, this thing open that we want and, and, and about sharing. So that's uh, an interesting action. Action three, um, if before I was talking about inner source, so working or adopting open source internally, this is more about our presence outside, outside uh, commission. We do have uh, currently uh, projects that are open source that are available in GitHub, but they are isolated cases and we do not have an official um, European Commission account where we as a block, we are present in GitLab, in GitHub. And we see that other governmental organizations like NASA or the European Space Agency, they are already there and we should be there as well. We should have our own presence in GitHub and have contributions from the open source communities uh, in an structured way. So as part of this action, the OSPO is in contact with the technical teams in charge of our Git repositories to make sure that we go out there with our open source projects in an official and organized way. So that's something we are working on as well. Then uh, action four, um, this is about changing the way we distribute our software. What you see in this screen is something that we call a commission decision. It's a document that development teams in commission, they have to produce if they want to go open source. Um, they have to draft a cover note, they have to uh to 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 write this document then they have to have it approved then there is an inter-service consultation and if everything if everything is fine and if everybody agrees then this development team they can go outside they can put their code outside as open source uh, as you can see it's a heavy process and when we see that development teams they have to do that in order to get uh, their their code as open we see that this is very discouraging. And so the OSPO, we are working with um, other teams in commission to change that process. And that instead of having to do all these administrative paperwork, if a development team, they want to go open source and put their code in GitHub, by default, they can do it. There is no necessary, there's not necessary to do this paperwork. And um, we hope that by that teams, they are, a bit, they feel relieved and they can go easily to, to put their code because we know that we have this willingness to do that. But these administrative steps, we know that they are uh, yeah, discouraging certain teams to do so. So we hope that by changing these rules, we will uh, invite our teams to more and more contribute to put their code in the different Git repositories and uh, being part of the community. Now, another action, um, we call it the Open Source Innovation Labs. This is something else we are working on. Um, it's about setting up a control environment and protect it where we can test open source products with the aim of uh, finally adopting them in our app store, in our set of tools that we use every day. And, um, we before Christmas we were asking all the different DGs in Commission. Okay, we are launching this. Um, do you have any ideas? What products would you like to test? And and it was very surprising to see uh, the amount of responses that we got of people proposing ideas, open source products that go from artificial intelligence to desktop solutions. Please test this. This is a good thing. Please. 
and um, we were very pleased to, to have this amount. Now we have a, a nice problem, which is to decide what we do first. But getting back again to the, the, uh, what I was saying, that commission is already changing the mood, that's already a good sign that the strategy that we are coming, it's, it's good. It's a way to officialize, but we already noticed that there is a trend already in commission to yeah to look more into open source and adopt open source practices so we hope that with this innovation labs we do interesting discoveries and uh, yeah eventually that they fulfill cases that where we need these products okay next action <clears throat> this is uh, about uh, outreach to community so getting closer to open source communities. Um, I have divided it into four sub actions. And this is something we are doing as part of the ISA Squared program. Maybe some of you know ISA Squared is a program um, that is running for many years that tends to promote interoperability and reusability across across the EU in public services. And with these funds that we have received with ISA Square, we are doing these four sub actions. And the first one that we are doing is launching a study about the funding mechanisms existing in Europe. Uh, of course, we know that they are open source funds like the Apache Foundation, Linux Foundation, uh, but we want to know whether there are still open source communities that they, they are not being helped enough despite having these uh, funds available. We want to know what is out there. We want to know if there are any gaps, if there are any communities that they need extra help financially or maybe not financially, but just support communication, uh, security. And we would like to have this picture of how well served is the open source community in terms of funding, because who knows, maybe we once we see this study and we see these gaps, we can say, hey, maybe commission they can do something. Maybe there is a particular area where we could have, I don't know, a European open source fund that maybe could tackle those cases that currently are missed. That And um, we, we see, we are very interested to know what uh, this study will, uh, will tell us. And eventually what we want is to avoid um, things like what you see in the picture uh, in this image where it reminds me a lot of the hard bleed uh, um, attack that happened a few years ago where you have the entire internet using the open SSL library. Who knows how many people were behind that library? Maybe if that component would have been better supported, maybe we wouldn't have had the losses, the millions of euros of losses that we had. So we are really interested to know what this study is giving us and whether we can help once we know uh, how the landscape looks like. Um, still with the ISA Square program, what we are doing, uh, the second sub initiative, it's um, European of open source inventory. And maybe inventory is a big word because of course, we don't think we are gonna cover all the public institutions in Europe, but we want to know across Europe, across the EU, from all the different public administrations, which open source products they are using with the ultimate goal of knowing which are the most critical ones, the, the, the ones that are more heavily used, and eventually see whether we can as well help those products, maybe running back bounties to make them more secure, or maybe with some funding. Um, the idea is again to sustain sustain these uh, products that they are giving already a service and, uh, and see whether eventually commission could help. So we are running this study with an external firm, they are helping us. They are uh, serving the different uh, public administrations in Europe at different levels. We, they are talking to cities, they are talking to regions, to national governments, and they're asking them, okay, which open source tools are you using? And uh, what is the criticality? How often do you use them? For what purposes? And um, yeah, we're looking forward to see what it comes out of it. And I, I take the opportunity for the attendees, the people listening to this, that if you are working for a European institution and you would like to be part of this study, 
please get in touch with with us at the end of the slide you will see our contact details if you think that uh, this institution is using open source and you would like this open source to be in our inventory for potential improvements help that we could give please uh, get in touch with with us so moving on i'm now um, sorry going to the third sub action of um, of this uh, action number seven we are running also bug bounties currently we are uh, we before christmas we talked to certain public institutions and we asked them okay which are the products that you are using open source that you think would benefit from a bug bounty um, and we came up with these three moodle element and simbra and we are currently they are the three of them they are going through a bug bounty process there is an army of ethical hackers going through them and raising vulnerabilities it's going very well we are very happy with the way it's going and we hope that with this initiative we are helping these three solutions to become better to become more secure and and to give at the end this ultimate service that we give to European, European public services. And uh, the last sub action of, of this uh, action seven is hackathons. This is something we already did in the past with uh, a project that some of you might know, it was called FOSA2. Uh, it was very successful. We were uh, doing bug bounties as well at that time, and we were doing hackathons. Of course, they were physical hackathons at that time. Um, now it will be virtual, but yes, that's uh, we are planning to do two of them during the first half of 2021. We have a pretty clear ideas of what we want to, what we want to do. It will be published soon, and. Um, Again, uh, the aim of this action seven, as the as the other three sub actions before, is just to get again in contact with open source communities, bring them together, share knowledge, share experiences, and overall, um, yeah, uh, help the 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 community. So this action seven was a bit longer, and um, we do have more, as you saw in the action plan. Uh, we had 10 actions. Uh, some of them involve uh, our governance procedures, like consider open source when we evaluate projects. Others, it's about uh, communication plans that we are doing inside commission to promote open source. Uh, we are also working on trainings uh, for uh, our staff to get more acquainted to open source. We are um, also in the HR part, we at some point we will get at the recruiting profiles to to see whether we can include also the open source uh, dimension when we are for uh, selection criteria. So as you can see, we are very busy and um, we are very exciting anyway. We are, we are very happy. And at the end, as I said, the ultimate goal is to change the mentality of commission. I forgot to say that it's something that it's an internal strategy. It's something that we do for the organization. Um, I say that because at the beginning, when the strategy was released, some people said, thought, okay, you are doing something for the EU, you are promoting something. And no, for, for the moment, it's just a strategy for us, uh, for the organization to change our culture and to embrace ultimately uh, open source, both in terms of practices, mentality, and as well as, as, as tools. So, uh, that's all I wanted to, to talk about. In case you have questions, uh, you can reach us in this email address, digit-ospo. Um, and uh, if you are interested in the strategy, you, you have the link as well over there. So, well, thank you very much for your time. I hope I gave you a nice overview of what we are doing. And if you have questions, please feel free, um, feel free to shoot. Thank you very much for your time. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, questions should be coming in soon. Hopefully, there's been no questions yet, but I think that's maybe because people are writing them. Uh, personally, I think that's awesome. I really appreciated the work that you're doing. I think that's a really great inner strategy session. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of questions uh, while we're waiting for people to send them in. OK. Um, my first question is Innovation Lab sounds awesome. That seems really cool that you're testing these things and trying to see you know, what's good and what can be used by the EC. 
Is there any plans to release the output of the Innovations Labs of how that testing process went? Well, actually, it was not initially planned to release it uh, because we thought, indeed, in, in, in terms of internal strategy. So uh, it was not the initial idea. But uh, I think uh, we will see if uh, something we didn't check. Maybe there's no problem in, in, in sharing uh, what we are using. In fact, there's no secret to say that we already have in our App Store things like LibreOffice, like Firefox. So I think it should not be an issue to say afterwards, look, we are adding uh, Element or Moodle or, or uh, yeah. So in theory, I don't think it should be an issue. Excellent. Um I love that. Okay, first question in the question tab. Uh, when you allow going open source as default and got rid of the process, how do you ensure that the projects conform, uh, conform with licenses and export laws? Do you yeah, read through the developers? That's a good question because I, I forget to say that, that indeed we are removing these uh, legal, um, these administrative steps, but there is a step that will stay there, which is this uh, out intellectual property checks that uh, the Joint Research Center is doing. So we are helping the development teams. They will not have to do that paperwork. That's good. Mm -hmm. But we will not, uh, we will continue doing, of course, the intellectual property checks. So that will stay continuing as a control. But at least the development teams, they will not have to write those, uh, allow me to say, boring documents. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you for doing that work on behalf of all developers everywhere. So still waiting for another question. Um, I have more questions. You mentioned bringing some stuff internally and mentioned trying to give back by maybe opening up a European Commission fund. I love that idea. That's awesome. What are you doing to help make sure that people on European Commission time are actually able to collaborate effectively with projects that aren't under the European Commission banner? Yeah, that's a, that's something we have asked ourselves, and it's a tricky it's a tricky point that we have not find the answer yet because we are a public institution, okay? So we 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 use uh, taxpayers' money, and that translates into projects with a limited budget. Uh, you have a project manager in commission. I have my budget. I need to deliver. So when you will have a developer saying, "Look, I want Friday's afternoon to contribute to other projects." The manager will say, okay, how do we do this? Because I, I I need to justify your time. We are using public money. So who knows? Maybe, maybe it's uh maybe we have a clause that says if it's something incidentally, an incidental contribution that's allowed, you don't even need to check to your line manager. Um, we're still working on that, but um it's a good point because we we ourselves we are trying to find the answer to that. Excellent. Um Still waiting for more questions. It looks like it's just me being able to ask all the questions I want to ask, which is kind of fun. Um, still five minutes left, if anyone is curious. You mentioned at the beginning, OSPOs. Uh, what are you doing to make sure you collaborate with other OSPOs or OSPO organizations? Yeah, well, um, we attend to international uh, events, open source events, but also with um, Open Forum Europe, we are in contact with them and they put us in contact with other OSPOs, which is very interesting. We learn a lot from, from them, um, like the OSPO in the Ministry of Technology in Israel. It's, they are very advanced and it's very amazing to see what they are doing. Uh, vice versa, United Nations, they are looking at us because <clears throat> they want to know what we have done so it's uh basically yes we are keeping this um uh this network thanks to being involved with uh, other organizations but now we are planning also to start leading ourselves uh workshops with uh that we can organize ourselves and we will start being active as well and proactive and contacting different organizations and to establish some uh, regular uh meetings as well to catch up and to share knowledge I'm excited about that too. I, I want to get involved somehow. Um, although I'm not European, so maybe I can't. Which actually <laughs> reminds me of my next question, because again, I'm still waiting for more questions. If anyone has any, please feel free. Um, I know there's some European commissioners, not all of them, but there's definitely a, a movement of digital sovereignty, the idea that code yeah. in the EU should stay in the EU. Um, how is this internal plan deal with that sort of thing? 
uh well it's it's linked uh, there, there is obvious link uh thanks uh, as you said uh, digital sovereignty is one of the objectives and it was mentioned by van der Leyen several times in her speeches so uh, and open source we see that as an enabler to that so uh yeah. and and um we we basically uh and, and even in fact uh, now uh, uh when we are asked for uh, um open source products in in the case of the innovation lab some of them they were asking for a secure email solution because they don't want to use um uh, another yep. another product so uh so yes it's very interlinked we think we consider that as an enabler and that of course is in our let's say uh things to keep in mind when uh, having our role in in the ospo excellent um good answer so, so uh, I have a, a question here. Um, if Paris gives two hours to your code, can you give two hours to Paris? Can we create a time exchange? Good idea. That, uh, so you mean the city of Paris? Uh, Assumedly, it's probably Philippe Ray, but I'm not sure. But <laughs> we'll that, that's, that, why not? That, that could be a kind of arrangement that we could do between uh, institutions to, to have like envelopes of hours that we could exchange to, to contribute to... Um, yeah, to different projects. Why not? That would be that would be uh, an interesting exchange. 